features. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The remote. Hey Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help! Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, oh, oh! Should I let it go? No! Oops! <laughs> Nolik? Nolik, she stole the remote. Nolik, where are you hiding? Nolik! Hello there, Fixies. Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing! I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it. Oh no, Nolik's in big time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Simka! Tom Thomas! Here I am! I'm over here! For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka! I ran to get a pack of mat What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great! But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack of mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote! A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second! Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush! Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough? All right, then. out for the remote's rays. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see them. What are you saying? You can! If you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. 
So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> The balloon. No way! You'll miss for sure! No problem. Huh. Anybody can do that! But I bet you can't do it if you tried bouncing the ball off the floor first. Just look. Oh, what are my parents gonna do to me? Maybe we should call Simka. Simka! And what's Simka gonna do to us when she sees this? So, got yourself in trouble, huh? You shouldn't be playing with a ball inside. And now we have your lamp to fix. But how? Only my dad can reach all the way up there. Why just your dad? You have a hot air balloon over there. That doesn't fly. It's just a toy, see? Well, it might be just a toy to you. But for us fixies, it's absolutely real. If an object is lighter than water, it floats up to the surface. And in the same way, if something is lighter than air, it floats upward. Did you know that hot air is lighter than cold air? Well, it is. And that means if you warm up the air in a balloon, it will float up. Hot air balloons use special gas burners to heat up the air inside of them so they will get lighter. And the bigger the balloon, the more people it can take up into the air. I know what you're saying, but where do we get a burner? You think Fixies don't have their own burners? Huh! Sure we've got them. Bring it down here, and I'll go talk to our parents. No, no, and no. The human child must never see us. Listen now, Simka. We already don't approve of him seeing you and Nolik. He won't look. Papas, please. You're the one who told us how you dreamed of flying since you trained to go into space. Yeah. For two years I waited on standby, but I never went up. And you've never flown in a hot air balloon either, honey. So let's call it a deal. I talked them into it. There's just one condition. You can't watch. Okay. You can come in now. Now prepare the burner! Coming right up! <gasps> Permission for takeoff? Permission is granted! And off we go! Hooray! It's flying! Don't you peek! Turn around! Oh, it was an accident! I'm going to evaluate the damage. Maintaining proper altitude. So, they've reached the spot. Air balloons are really awesome. I wonder, who figured out how to do that? It was the Montgolfiers. The hot air balloon was invented in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers from France. In those days, there were no gas burners, so they heated the air inside the balloon by burning straw. At first, there were no passengers on their balloon. Not counting the fixies, of course. I mean, how else could a balloon get up in the air without them? Unfortunately, the names of the first fixies who took that flight were not recorded in the annals of history. Following the fixies' flight, the next passengers were animals. A ram, a rooster, and a duck. And it was not until those three safely landed after flying a full four kilometers that humans dared to fly in hot air balloons themselves. Ever since their invention, hot air balloons have also gone by another name, Montgolfiers. Hooray! Tadish! Tadish! All right. 
Shimka, please let your parents know that I'm so very thankful. Okay, by the way, now you can turn around. You know, Simka, let's fly the balloon just like them. There's no way, Nolik, we would need to use the burner, and kids aren't allowed to play with fire. I'll give you a ride. Look, I still need to put it back up on the shelf, so climb in and let's do it. Stapler. Tom Thomas gets the ball. He makes an incredible move. He's wide open. The goalie sees him and he screams in horror. He shoots and scores. Tom Thomas, stop kicking that ball. Your school concert starts in 30 minutes, and I don't want to iron your pants again. All right, Mom. Just one more time, huh? No, I'm sorry. Mom said I have to quit kicking the ball. But Mom said nothing about dribbling the ball. Go, you can Tom do Tom. it. You can do it. Yeah. Go. Special concert pants. Ugh. Yeah, how will you go now? Well, your mom does have enough time to sew them. I'm scared to even tell her about it. She said that I had to stop playing. Hey, I've got it! Here! You think we should fix the rip in his pants with a stapler? Yeah, isn't it a good idea? Uh, I gotta try it out. You do. Like this? Stop! Why? What's wrong? Eh, my nose itches. That's all. Let's go. You're right, Nolik. It works. That is super. Yeah, the stapler's really great. Do you guys know how it works? Just keep stapling and I'll tell you. The staples for a stapler are lightly glued together. That way you can load many staples at once instead of one at a time and a spring pushes the staples to the front. When you push down on the arm, a metal tooth pushes the front staple down through a thin space, and the staple punches holes in the paper. Next, the pointy ends of the staple push down onto a plate, and that makes the staple bend behind the paper. And there you go, the papers are fastened. So you could say that we're sewing, but using a stapler instead of a needle. Yeah, and it works even faster. Huh? What's going on? Could it have run out of staples? There's still a lot more staples, but one of them got jammed here in the slot. Ugh. Tom Thomas, we're leaving in five minutes. Okay, Mom. So, did you get it? No. <sighs> Why don't we get Papa's to help us? Cause he's really strong and he's got a pack a mat. We can do this ourselves. Tom Thomas, find something we can use to push that staple out. The stapler is not a very new invention. It's been said that the French king, King Louis XV, had a stapler made out of gold and precious gems. Unfortunately, it could only hold one staple at a time. Modern staplers are much more convenient, and people have come up with so many kinds for paper, for plywood, and even for skin. Yes, surgeons often use them during operations. Then there's the staple gun that's used to upholster furniture. And its older brother, the nail gun, can even be used to hold together the walls of a building. And here's an invention almost as important as a stapler. It's the staple remover. 
With its help, it's possible to remove the staples put in by a stapler. How about the screwdriver? That'll work. Look, the screwdriver fits perfectly into the slot. Ah, that's great. Now push that staple through. Only keep your fingers out of the way, or you won't finish sewing. Tadish! It's still not Tadish. You haven't fixed your pants yet. That's it. They're done. Now we can say, Tadish! Tom Thomas, are you ready? Of course. My idea with the stapler was smart, wasn't it? And Tom Thomas's mother won't notice a thing. Will too. Just wait till she washes them.